Well, hey there team and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Terra Invicta. I figured since the channel's going through a little bit of a soft reboot with XCOM, well not XCOM, sorry, Xeno Noughts, but XCOM likes, you know, Settlers as well. So we're getting into these more strategic layer games at the moment. Terra Invicta would be right at home. We've looked at it in the past. In fact, we didn't look at it that long ago, but like I said, a little bit of a soft reboot on the channel. Plus this is one of the more requested games people keep asking me to revisit. So here you go. Um, let me know if you do enjoy this, chuck a comment, that sort of thing, and before you know it, we'll have a hundred episodes out. So what is Terra Invicta? To call it an XCOM-like would be probably fair if you could call that sort of genre of alien invasion and running organizations as a knee-jerk to it. Uh, that's where the, the similarities kind of stop, but as a broad genre, yes. Uh, this is less about organizing a, a team of uh, skirmishes for tactical combat and more global you're a puppet organization, a shadow organization, with uh, little um, counselors, I suppose, little agents that you send out to try and manipulate the back end of a lot of world's already pre-established geopolitical, you know, states um, as we deal with an alien invasion on a global scale. It's not clandestine, at least, you know, the world is aware of the alien problem. And, and a lot of the early stuff that you do in this game is like trying to achieve uh, efficient and uh, uplift so you can get materials into space and start building a fleet and bases and, and trying to really escalate and ramp up to deal with this uh, solar present uh, alien incursion. Anyway, so th yes, if it sounds very epic, then yes, that's because it is. Um, tutorial, I don't think we need to do that. Thank you. I know what I'm doing. The game did have a humongous patch as well, so there's still merit for coming back to this. Apparently, they've done a four month long rework over a lot of the AI and how it behaves, which is great. Um, you can choose different factions, but the way I understand it is the game is built with the idea that you're going to play as the resistance, and these are more like AI uh, antagonistic factions. Um, which is cool because th these all kind of represents the spheres of uh, of human reaction to an alien incursion, right? There are some people like the resistance that want to, you know, basically resist, pretty straightforward. Humanity first, is, they've got a more of an exterminating me mentality towards dealing with the aliens. There's ones that want to serve uh, and, and submit. There's the ones that want to try and sort of co coexist and work out some sort of joint venture with the aliens. It's really cool. So they're not directly antagonistic necessarily, but you're potentially at cross purposes with how you handle the incursion. Um, let's just leave it all on the defaults and press start. Um, and then off we go. So yes, it's, it's very lofty. Uh, and with that, I would argue uh, to someone that doesn't have an appetite for this sort of game, it can be quite dry. Um, but at the same time, if this is your jam, if this is the sort of thing that you're into, you already like the XCOM stuff, the Xenonaut stuff, the Phoenix Point stuff, but perhaps you find it a little bit too uh, ground level, a little bit too narrow. Well, this, this is for you. It's adjacent to a spreadsheet simulator at times, but like I said, I, I don't think it's out to try and sell itself to a new crowd. The people that want to play this game will find it, <laughs> I would hope. Well, hopefully they find it through my channel. So that would be good as well. Um, so yeah. I remember the day the stars answered, the day we learned we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, oh, I love this game. some of us saw wondrous possibility and others existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them until it burned through our atmosphere and crashed in a remote region, leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. In our ignorance, we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. Everyone loves heroes, depends on them, to save us from evil, lead us through darkness. Problem is, real heroes are always ignored. What oh, no one so. understands is that being shot at is easy. The hard part is convincing someone they're drowning before it's too damn late. I mean, I get what they're going for, but I, I find it to be a bit of drivel, to be honest. <laughs> Getting shot at's easy. Right, okay. So it crashes randomly on the, on the planet. Um, here you go in Vienna of all places. Okay. 
Uh, one of the other things is the game, I don't know, reads your registry or something, something incredibly invasive, <laughs> and it'll give you one of your starting operators from your local region. Be that I'm an Australian, I get myself an Australian. Anyway, so we're going to go through this. Uh, I'm excited to do this, and, and hopefully this finds a new crowd of people that are here from Xenonauts and that. It's going to be some wall of text and narrative reading and that along the way, um, but we'll see. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know. Uh, so a UFO crashes on Earth. An alien vessel has crashed down in the Vienna region of the Alpine states. With the wreckage, uh, while the wreckage is unrecoverable, we suspect that an alien life form escaped into the surrounding countryside. Okay. Greetings, Commander. Yep. I am pleased to report the Council me, eh? has appointed you leader of our organization. Wonderful. I am Fiona Iwade, your Chief of Staff. While most of the world is reacting with fascination at the arrival of an alien species on Earth, we represent a small group who believes the alien's crash landing and disappearance may signify a potential threat. Yes. We intend to build an international organization capable of investigating and, if necessary, combating any danger aliens may pose. Sure. That sounds good. I recommend we send a counselor to investigate the crash site in the Vienna region as soon as possible. Our other counselors may be best used to try to gain influence in nations that may be able to contribute resources to our cause. Sure. Uh, our first knowledge of alien uh, arrival came when its spacecraft aero braked in our atmosphere before crashing down into a remote territory, apparently self-destructing. We should send a counselor to the site to learn what we can. So that's our sort of general objective, though it is all very general. Um, you can have a look at all this. Mixia Kai. Oh, you're one of my people. Okay, wonderful. Yes, this advice is generally quite, I find, useless, but uh, okay. Thank you, Mixia. And who else have we got? Sydney Unsworth. Hello. Look at you. All right. So, 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 so. You can see down here, these little uh, widgets are uh, abilities of your counselors. If I tab your through orders. them, you can see they've got totally different ones. And Where do you, need you always start with this. Investigate alien activity. And because it's not grayed out, that means it can be used. So we're going to click on that. We can tab. And here we are in Vienna at the crash site. You can see it's got a little blip there. We'll look out. Blindy France Force. Very good. Okay, so we're going to lock in her order we'll to investigate there. Mixia, the what are we going to do with Mixia? She can control nation, which in the early going is probably the play. Oh man, there's so much to explain. Um, but essentially what we want to do is try and influence something. We need to take over our own little slice somewhere. What's the boost in Australia like? Zero. Then that's great. I mean, I guess it makes sense. We don't really have a space program. Um, priorities, here we go. So these are, oh my goodness, this is great. Okay. <laughs> Essentially, these are the control points and they are set, they are determined by GDP. Right, so if I tab around through things, no, here. that's not working because um, I've got operatives. Let's just click things. Russia, you can see, has very large blips to control, whereas somewhere like Mongolia doesn't. Um, and with that, it becomes much more difficult to control the larger factions. So you have some strategies there. Maybe you try really hard to take on a big superpower type uh, faction, or you um go over the smaller sort of pickings up here you can see zero out of 131 that is our general control ceiling so somewhere like somalia would only play, probably take up a couple of points out of that whereas somewhere like russia taking one of their control points will probably take up 30 or something like that so even if you do go over the superpowers and you control them um it's going to be very very limited what you can control um also, since I mentioned boost, we, we do want to sort of develop a space program because if you zoom out, get ready for this. Here's the wider solar system and all the asteroids and everything. And we want to get out there and start mining all these cool items. Um, so equatorial control is helpful because that helps with boost, generally speaking. India, got a tiny little bit already. 
You can. There are some pull downs as well. Um, let me see. Go to Earth view solar system. Not what I was going for. Nations, right? You can list it all here. And you can see where that's us, the resistance, but you can sort of see our relative presence in the hearts and minds of people. Control points. But what you could do probably is just go, if we allocate her to control a nation, there is a pull down here and it goes in order of percent chance. Um, and last time I really, I kind of went hard on the paint in taking over sort of the, the Africa regions. Having things next to each other is also quite sensible. Maybe I'd do Australia. You know, Southeast Asia. Let's give it a go. 15% chance. You can see there's her persuasion. Demagogue. Oh, that's no good. Target size of national economy. What we could probably try and do is we can contribute influence to it. God, if we use all of that influence. Oh, does it cap out at 32? Because I've got more than 32. 65% chance. Oh. Is it worth it? I don't think so, actually. No, bugger. I'm going to go with my normal MO because I'm more comfortable with it. This is what I like doing. We're just going to go ballistic in Africa, right? Um, control nation. Taking control. Right. Um, Counselors. So we've got two, obviously, and we've got a slot for two more, and then we can research our way into more. So we want to hire them, and that's going to cost us that influence as well. 60 and 30 are usually the beginning. What is... <laughs> what am I looking at there? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, but what abilities do you have? And honestly, the ones that I only care about are uh, control point, which you don't have, which frustrates me. And the judge doesn't have that either. And what about you, Matt Price, astronaut? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, control nation. It's under persuasion. Okay, let's just double check then. Oh, no, you do have control nation at level two as well. And you have it at level two too. Okay, so... Investigate only in activity level one. Oh, they've both got some pretty similar stuff, actually. I might grab old Pricey the astronaut here as well. Also, having people from different nations helps as well. Let me show you why. Um, if you go to the character, they essentially can equip these organizations. It's sort of like an RPG armor mechanic. Um, there will be prerequisites like, uh, there you go, you can see here. Headquartered in London, the government communication headquarters. So a big deal. They've got a star rating as well. Oh, there you go, Australia Special Air Service. This might, might be a bit of a better one, right? So it's only one star. They have an organizational capacity for how much can be equipped. Um, they, you need to have certain traits to equip it and you need to have certain prices, but often, you know, you have to have the, uh, the actual... Um, nationality to do it as well. Anyway, so there's a lot going on. Um, Where to? I don't want to get too bogged in. We're going to get you to control a nation. And it's going to be... Let's see. Oh. Et Etria? Is that how you say it? Yeah, that'll do. I misclicked, but that'll do. <laughs> we'll be running this place in no time. And we've only got 20 influence, so we wouldn't really be able to afford... Um, another another counselor at the moment. So broadly speaking, you just plug in their, their things and then you go confirm and then off you go. You unpause. Uh, one Actually, one thing we should check is our research situation. What's this over here? Intel. Uh, okay, don't worry about that. Research. So you've got, um, you've got home research, I suppose, and you've got the global wider research for the for the good of mankind that sort of thing you can toggle how much of your funding is going into it and it's all ratio based right you can sort of see 50 50 because of that 60 40 um you don't have to invest on the global scale but i think you have to go with a with a home develop oh no there you go as long as you're researching something which makes sense 
Now, the tech tree is incredibly overwhelming. This is a limited version of it. It's not even the full tech tree, but uh, there's a lot going on. Essentially, the reason that you want to contribute on the on the global scale is because once it ticks over and it hits that 500 and it finishes researching, say, we are not alone, whoever is the chip leader, whoever contributed the most to that tech race gets to pick the next tech. So you, you get a bit of agency over it. Or you could just want to push these technologies forward because, you know, mission to space, Skywatch. Uh, which is uh, surveillance on a solar system scale. These are good things to have. Um, but if you don't contribute to them, you won't get them. Meanwhile, back here at home, we've got default projects. And these remind me of like, you know, Civ 6 or the Civilization games. You'll have like, don't build anything, just generate money sort of t uh, industry choices. Same sort of thing here. You can just put 100 research into this and it will give you a, a cash injection. But I think even though it's repeatable, every time it scales up, there you go, it re increases by 100 each time you do it. So it has a bit of a scale to it. Honestly, I'm not that worried. Let's just put all of our research into home. But it was worth covering that. Anyway, let's unpause. Let's speed right up and let her run. Okay, select the management team. May now recruit our factions management team. As we stand up resistance operations, we're selecting our internal management team to help oversee our affairs. While we are gathering personnel from a variety of disciplines, at your direction, we will emphasize a particular speciality. Lobbyists increases our influence by three. That's actually really tempting. Increases monthly research income. Mm hmm gain 50 operations we're not really doing a lot of operations at the moment monthly income increases let's go with lobbyists disgusting but we need them. now these are all the world events going on here on the world stage this is just going to start getting out of control um un security council meets uh to discuss the alien arrival unfortunately the hoped for show of international unity does not materialize with china russia and the united states accusing each other of hiding knowledge about the alien crash and preventing full access to the site well sounds about right we have an opportunity to shape events to our advantage even make our case directly to the nations of the world however with the eye of the world on these meetings our counselors risk exposure to our enemies is extremely high so you have a choice here to deliver your treatise or manifesto to the world you get a big big influence injection however uh it's sort of like you're stepping out of the shadows i'm gonna go hard actually because i want the 50 influence they are here to cleanse our sick world yep. the aliens are our saviors and all who oppose them are enemies of the future. Right. So it seems that the servants have made themselves known. It has always been true that we must leave the cradle if our species is to survive. If these aliens are indeed hostile, the time to go is now. So there's Project Exodus. But you can see what I mean. Like, uh, um, I think, not to dwell on it, but a lot of gamers talk about how they don't like politics or ideology in video games and i agree because there's not a lot of nuance in the modern generation of writers they will just browbeat you and tell you you're wrong if you don't agree that's what we mean by don't put that in however with this this trapping is very clever and it's a great way of coming at a, a problem with different ideological concepts and and ways of looking at the same problem and how to solve it without really telling the player you're right or wrong or whatever, right? So servants want to submit. Exodus reckons let's get off the planet now and speed that up, and that's their agenda. Ours is to sort of resist the incursion. Well, you saw our, our sort of, our um, imperative is more to just research, just to sort of investigate um, the sites. And there'll be like eight Spread factions all up, I think. I can't remember. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there because I, I find that interesting. This sort of stuff can be tackled tastefully. Um, and, and who would have thought it would happen in a bloody 4X type game? I have learned some useful information from my investigation of the UFO crash site in the Alpine States. We will receive a small bonus to our xenology research going forward, right? 
This is from Sidney Unsworth. So this is the result of... Uh, we have found something, Commander. This is the result of her research, and I will show you... I don't know if I can pull it up while that splash is there. Hmm. Can I move this? I can't. Essentially, you'll, there, there will be a bonus. If we do a Xenology-specific bit of research, um, we will now get like a 1% incremental bonus. So the more of these sites that we investigate, we get these incremental compounding bonuses to our further research in that field. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. We've completed the investigation of the alien crash objective. Uh, despite heavy security, we were able to obtain some surveillance records of the crash site, as well as a small quantity of debris. We should have a project ready for research shortly. Oh, there you go. Look at that. 20 influence. Let's go. Cool. New objective, research alien signatures. Our council was able to obtain some surveillance recordings from the alien crash site. A researcher should uh, analyze it as soon as possible. Um, cool. Well, let's actually look at that. Maybe we even change project. Oh, maybe we don't have the alien research project yet. It'll, it'll come. Okay. Unpause. We've gained significant support. This is great. So we've managed to get control of, where are we? The Central African Republic. Good work. This is the project, new available, alien signatures. And we want to focus in on this. So we'll go to open, change. It's only going to take 25 research. Um, and you can see there, xenology is the study. See, this is social science. They're all social sciences. So this is what we got the bonus to. So if we click on this, you can see we have a plus 1% bonus here. And that's from our alien investigations. What does that say there? Bonuses from HAB modules, fleets, are subject to diminishing returns. Once the cumulative bonus is greater than 50%. Huh. Okay, we'll keep that in mind for later. That's much later. We've got our people in place. Very cool. Eritrea. E Eritrea. Is that it? Eritrea. I'm sorry, I apologize. I read these things, I don't read them out loud often. One humanity? The growing realization that we are not the sole sapient species in the universe is causing many to see their fellow humans in a new light, leading to hope that we can overcome our capacity for strife to address the alien arrival as one people. Let us try to set aside our differences and go forward together. All nations gain one cohesion. Invent a wave of fear. Okay. So that's one of the national statistics that you can work towards. It might be a good time to actually just have a quick look at this. There is a lot governing what makes uh, a country work in this. Um, so you can put points towards economy, welfare, knowledge, that sort of thing. But up here you've got, let's mouse over them in turn, Ma monthly investment points, which are essentially these. Uh, funding, research, boost, controls. Have they actually changed? No, 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 no. no it's more of these. So you've got the type of government. So currently authoritarian, but trending out of it. Subversion. It's GDP's trending down. Its current military level is the atomic age, so this their militaries can mobilize and they can you can have world wars and all that sort of stuff as well. But um that I think this is the nukes that you've got. Navies. Uh what else have we got here? Inequality. Per capita GDP. Cohesion, dominated but moving out of it. And then education. So there's a push pull. And it's very, very complicated. Generally speaking, you're going to pick one concept and go with it. <laughs> um, you can, as you gain control, because this is Eritrea, if I continue to say that wrong, you can see we've got this control point. So the country itself is going to generate its own development points, I believe, and distribute them as they will. But we can nudge them now that we've got a bit of control. So these represent the nation's economic surplus. They can be distributed by factions with the control points in the priorities tab. Value is set by the nation's GDP and reduced by the number of armies it fields and by high levels of unrest. The nation's GDP provides a base of 1.88 investment points per month. It currently has so many uh, available for distribution. Unrest is decreasing this nation's investment points by 8%. 
So you can choose a pull down and there's all these different sort of templates, but ours by default is resist. Puts a little bit into economy and a lot of into knowledge, military, funding, space program, and nuclear weapons. Holy heck. All right, if you say so, game. As long as space program is getting funded. Now, spoils, we'll have a look at this. The direct extraction of wealth from an economy accomplished by avoiding the true costs of obtaining it. Oh, okay, right, get over here. It'll be in before someone comes in here bloody brow beating me about their crappy ideals. This covers such behaviors as crime and corruption, uh, regulatory capture and tax avoidance, economic rents. Yes, yeah, so it's a sort, it's kind of, it's kind of money slippage in a way um, from all ends. Uh, if the priority has a warning symbol, the nation's elites are receiving insufficient spoils to fulfill their desires. Elites in this nation require at least 39% of investment points directed to them, although that will decrease with investments in education and democracy or very high national cohesion. So it, it tells you in the tooltip how to sort of fix these things. Uh, when the elites are dissatisfied, coups are more likely to occur, which is not great. Um, I might reorg it a little bit. I still want mass... I don't know if we really want nuclear weapons, to be honest. I don't care about that. In fact, honestly, all I really care about is the space program, right? We'll put enough into spoils to keep them happy. Let's do that. Cool. Um, anyway, so that's essentially what a turn looks like. It took ages for me to sort of break it down. There's a lot going on. Um, but now we continue with our general objective, which is, I think we're just going to keep scooping up these regions. So he's our weaker recruiter. So I think maybe we put him on... Oh yeah, 60% will do. Have a swing at that. You can, you can invest points, but I don't really want to do that. Establishing our presence. Sydney, you can control nations as well, which is wonderful. Let's put you on that. We'll be running this place in no time. That's the plan. Where do you need me? Right there. What level are you for persuasion eight? Control nation three. That makes more sense. Cool. Um, where? Let me out of this screen, please. Yeah, that'll do perfectly. We'll be running so we'll just start controlling time. them. Now, now, if you manage to control a whole bunch of them, what you can you can actually nudge them to potentially ally with each other. Uh, re relations, allies, manage. Eritrea. I can't do it yet. Requirement for alliance with fail. Okay, so... Not at war. Must maintain normalized relations for physician duration. Uh, uh, either adjacent or has at least three control points. Or has... Okay, 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 okay. Form federation. No, what we want is the alliance. So they're too small and they need an adjacency. But that sort of proves my point. Control... What is this that we're controlling here? South Sudan. Controlling that, hopefully we can start allying them all together. Which will be pretty cool. Now we've got a bucket load of influence. And I think what we'll do is we'll expand our council seat. We want... Control Nation 3 is pretty cool. Thet Kai Thingy. An evangelist. Oh, look out. Control Nation. We've got Yo Takagi, Celebrity. Control Nation. Oh, wow. Um, and then we've still got the dregs that no one else wanted. Um, Control Nation 3. Oh, you're the judge. Ah. Is it worth... Evangelist, hey? I mean, it's tempting, isn't it? Now, let's get this Japanese celebrity dude. He doesn't have a lot of skills, <laughs> but he can control nations like a fiend. So that, that'll do me just fine. Sort of spread our nationalities around a little bit. Did I, did I not recruit you just then? I thought I did. Recruit. Confirm. There we go. Yotakagi. 
the alliance of celebrities because we should listen to what they have to bloody say. Oh my god. Your orders. All right, let's get back over here and maybe we push. Let's push to the coast to Somalia. Control. Taking control. Wonderful. Cool. All right. Press the go button. Unpause. Off we go. The world turns. You can see they've all got little timers on them. Our presence is growing. Uh, there we go. We've controlled a nation. Our presence is growing. Good. We've gained significant support. The, the, the first one was different because they would have multiple control points, and you can just automatically tell the counselor to re up the next mission to save you having to be fiddly. I'm not that We've worried. Gained significant yeah, like this. Support. So Sudan probably has a second point if you click on it. Uh, that's Somalia. Um, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, org marketplace is updated. That's a good point. We should have a look at that. Um, what Ready. If you scale at your here, service, you might see no. Okay. All right, and that's it. That's the start of it. Um, now, one thing that does frustrate me a little bit, but again, this could be because of my play style, because I like to scoop up all the crappy little nations. No offense to the little nations, but in the scheme of things, I'm putting a lot of effort into the little baby nations. Um, setting all their priorities becomes a little bit fiddly. I think if you were going at the other end and maybe you were trying to take over an entire, you know, massive power, you wouldn't have to, you know, worrying about this would be much less fiddly. So each to their own. Uh, this is just how I like to play it, whatever. Um, yeah. And so the plan will be continue trying to take over essentially the entire continent. Um, we'll start seeing if we can ally up. For example, now that we just took that, relations, allies, here we go, much more reasonable. You have to pay influence, but you'll see there that we'll get a pop-up as well. There's a new alliance between Central Africa and South Sudan. Uh, and if we click on Central Africa, you can see the allies are there already, so you don't have to you don't have to ally back the other way, sort of thing. Yeah. Cool. And then you saw we saw the requirements for being an ally. You can go to Federation and you can go to unification all the way up. And I think that's what I want to do. That's what I sort of want to aim for, is create a new African superpower. <laughs> Humble beginnings, right? Just nothing nothing big, nothing big I'm demanding. Everyone's fighting aliens and I'm, I'm making one Africa. Uh, anyway, cool. So team, let me know if you want to see some more. I'm sure there's plenty of you that want to, but you know, chucking a like, chucking a comment, give me that feedback so I know what to keep playing would be very helpful. Team, we might just leave it there for the time being and I will catch you guys on the next one.